my name is Katie. I'm one of the children's librarians at the Lexington Public Library. And today I'm going to present to you a really great way to explore the world around you with a sensory scavenger hunt. As you can tell, I am outside, which is a world full of great sensory experiences, but that is not to say that you can't do this indoors as well. In fact, this is a, a scavenger hunt that only requires what you already have um, in your own person. So it's a pretty simple thing to do. You can make it more of a challenge if you want, or you can just use it as a lovely tool. It is really great for people of all ages, kids as well as adults, and you can use it in a variety of different ways. You can use this as a uh, tool to help you calm after a moment of anxiety or a time of anxiety or an entire coronavirus of anxiety. Um, you can use it um, to help you feel more present in the world. It's a great tool when you're getting up first thing in the morning just to feel as though you're connected to the world. Or you could even add it to say an afternoon hike and add an extra sensory element to your hike to make it a little bit more, um, add a little bit more flavor to it, maybe literally. We'll come to that in just a moment. So this is, like I said, it's a really great tool. I would recommend that if you do use this for stemming anxiety and being able to feel more grounded, try it in a moment when you're not anxious or when your child is not anxious. This is a really great thing for kids to be able to do, but it doesn't work so well if you try it the first time when you're feeling very pent up and, and frazzled. Um, you'll forget the steps. There's only five of them. You'll forget them. And, and, no, and that just adds to the anxiety. So let's try it now all together. Like I said, you could make this more challenging, but it's really super sens simple. You, all you need are five senses. I know we have more than five senses, but these are the ones that we think about most frequently. Our sight, our hearing, our touch, our smell, and our taste. You already have those in hand. So here's how you do it. We're going to start We're by fi seeing five things, literally seeing five things around you that you can see. I laid out my table with all sorts of things and I can see in the video that I'm filming that there is grass behind me. So that's thing number one. I have sidewalk chalk, thing number two. I have a lovely pot of flowers, thing number three. I have a bowl full of clementines. I'm going to double dip with this one. This is going to come into play a number of extra times, but for now we're seeing it as one of the five things that I can see. And well, I can see that I have sunglasses on. So five things, super simple. The next step, it's a lovely countdown scavenger hunt. The next step are you going to listen for four things that you can hear. I'd be really curious to see what you all can hear from filming this video. I've practiced this a couple of times and every time either the volume is different or I hear something slightly different. So let me know, I'd be really curious. First, I hear the wind rustling through the trees. It's blowing pretty well out here today. I'm surprised my hair's not in my face right now. Um, I hear lots of birds. They have been chirping all day long. I can hear the traffic from a couple of streets over. That's one of those sounds that if you live in a place long enough, you start to tune out after a while. But this sensory scavenger hunt is helping us to tune in. So I, I hear the traffic. It's, you people should slow down. And it's kind of faint, but I can hear my neighbors a couple of doors that way. They're talking in their backyard. I wonder what they're thinking about me. I'm surprised I don't hear dogs. I usually frequently hear dogs. So, all right, that was four things that you can hear. Now, it's going to be three things that you can touch. And I will tell you, I have done this century scavenger hunt as a calming activity for myself, and I always get the order reversed. That doesn't matter, that's okay. The point is that you're going to start to feel a little bit more in tune. If you look for four things that you can taste and three things that you can hear, that's fine. That's totally fine. 
So, three things that you can touch. So, let's go back. My lovely Clementine. It's nice and bumpy and it feels pretty nice. It has good heft. Um, I can touch my skin. That's a really, really great way to feel in tune with your own self because you can touch yourself. You're always available. And um, I'm going to touch the table right next to me. So it needs to be washed. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Those are three things that I can touch. Next is two things that you can smell. And I'm gonna cheat on this one a little bit, simply because I'm lucky enough to have a little tiny herb garden that we haven't killed off yet. So I'm gonna use this entire category as one of the two things, but I have three different types of herbs in here. I have rosemary. Oh, oh. it smells so nice and woodsy and now I'm hungry. I have thyme. Oh. It's so lovely and lemony, and it, it just, it brings me joy when I smell it, which is one of the reasons why you do this as a sensory scavenger hunt. <sighs> yes. Um, sorry guys, I'm just gonna smell my herbs. They smell lovely. And then we have lovely tiny little mint. Oh, and it smells so good. It's so refreshing and bright. Mm. So technically, like I said, that could be three different things that I smell, but I'm using that as one category. And then I'm going to go back to my orange because it's so bright and my nose is now wet. It's so bright and refreshing and, and smells delicious and um, makes me want to go for my very last sensory experience. And all you have to do for this one is think of one thing that you can taste. Now, if you try this first thing in the morning, I'm very sorry to tell you that you're probably not going to taste anything other than the fact that you need to brush your teeth, but that's okay. It is a sensory experience. You are supposed to just be in tune with what you're experiencing. It doesn't have to be a great one. and orange taste at the same time. Mm. Oh well. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a perfect sensory experience. And you can double dip on your objects. I mean, I saw it and smelled it and tasted it and that is, felt it. All of this, I did not hear it. No, that would be really odd. Um, all of those experiences come to, to be a part of this tiny, simple experience that anyone can do. I hope that you do it yourself. If you do, if you find something really exciting or you um, notice something that you may not have noticed before, let us know. Share it with us. Use the hashtag LPL at home and keep checking our Facebook page for more live events and more recorded events and our website www.lexpublive.org for all of the activities that we have going on this summer. We miss seeing you all in person, but we want us all to stay safe and healthy at home. Thank you so much. I'll see you another time.